Hi, I'm Taylor Sievertson, a Community Development Research Assistant at North Dakota State University. In today's segment, we'll be discussing Barnesville's built capital. Built capital is sometimes called physical capital because it references all the human-made components in an environment. Homes, utilities, buildings, roadways, and other infrastructure can be assets that strengthen built capital. Barnesville is a unique community in many ways, but its city-owned utilities, including internet and cable, provides residents with quality products that their taxes help support. The housing stock is largely owner-occupied, and with the recent annexation of additional land, new construction is increasing. Finally, the other structures, commercial park, and vibrant brick-and-mortar businesses contribute to the robust built capital present in this community. Let's begin with an appraisal of the city's unique utility infrastructure with Mike Reitz, Barnesville's city administrator. My name is uh, Mike Reitz. I'm the city administrator here in Barnesville. Right now, the, our water, the capacity in our water system is, uh, is meeting our needs very well. Um, about 12 years ago, they, they built a new water tower, uh, a 400,000 gallon water tower. Um, and then the water plant uh, is able to run at about 600 gallons a minute. Um, that, that's, uh, that water plant's been in place for a number of years, but it uh, seems is still meeting our needs just fine. The, the key piece to the sanitary system is, is the, the lagoons. Um, in, uh, I think, uh, 2006, they added on to the lagoons that they had, uh, basically doubling the capacity. In addition to traditional city utilities, um, we are also the phone company, the cable company, and the internet company. Uh, we've actually been the telephone company since the early 1900s, and I think the reason for that is because it was a fairly rural area, the city fathers at that time wanted to make sure that the community had uh, good, reliable phone service for, for their residents. Over the years, as, as uh, uh, technology has changed, um, we've added the, the cable services, and then as the internet came along, we've, we've added that. Um, we invested about $4 million uh, about two years ago to put fiber optic uh, lines to every customer in the community. So, so we are uh, completely up to date as far as the, the delivery technology and are able to handle uh, a, a wide range of bandwidth for our customers. We are a municipal electric utility um, and so what we do is we buy power wholesale from from other sources. Uh, we get actually about 40% of our power from a series of uh, hydroelectric dams uh, on to the west of here. Um, so that provides some fairly inexpensive power. The rest we purchase from Missouri, a, a company called Missouri River Energy Services. Um, the substations uh, at this point are, are capable of meeting the needs uh, and, and handling the growth of the community. Let's now evaluate the housing stock and statistics here in Barnesville. In total, there are 1,130 housing units. Of those, 1,001 are occupied. The majority of those occupied units are single-family homes that are owned rather than rented. About 162 units are renter-occupied. Barnesville's growth patterns have coincided with efforts to encourage young families to move to the area. There are a wide array of homes for newcomers and current residents to select from. While most of the properties were built prior to 1979, the Dell Acres Gilbertson Edition on the southeast end of town offers lots for customization and new construction. Currently, there are 21 homes for sale, ranging in price from $39,000 to $650,000. The median price of owner-occupied homes is $128,400. Information like this can be easily found using the tools on the U.S. Census Bureau database. With a rich rural history, it's no surprise that there are also a number of historic homes and unique properties that also call Barnesville home. I guess the most classic home here is the we call it the stone house down here. It's right on Highway 
nine. Now that was built back in the, the story goes. At the time they were clearing the land here, getting the rocks out of the fields for the farmers. But no one had any money. They were just clearing the land. So he asked the farmers to bring their stones in from the field there, you know. Built that house from field stone. I've included a sampling of the variety of other buildings in this town. Let's have a look at some of those now. As we work to understand all of the assets in a community, graphic tools can serve as a visual representation. Asset mapping provides a clearer way to understand how resources may be mobilized to assess development considerations. As this video has shown, Barnesville's built capital assets can be described through the infrastructure, homes, and other important structures. These places and things become a physical network through which residents can interact and thrive in Barnesville. They provide the basis for a group of people to exist in a certain geography, but built capital alone does not create a community. The way that these spaces and utility systems allow for improvements in other areas starts to get at the importance of strong built capital. For example, Barnesville's numerous healthcare facilities improve the potential for higher levels of health, jobs for qualified employees, let alone countless other outcomes that build capacity in other areas.